So I've been looking to build a proper home grid and move off the old Dells I started experimenting with. Uh, I already got a NAS for a file server, a little thin mini PC for a terminal, and now I have this to fill the role of a CPU server. This is the B-Link EQR6. Comes in a few different configurations. This one in particular has an AMD 6600H CPU. And it came with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig NVMe drive. Um, has a rather just sort of plain gray case it comes in. So on the front, there's USB, an audio jack, USB-C, and a power button. Uh, there's a little light, and I think this little hole here is for uh, like resetting the uh, BIOS. So on the back, uh, there's the fan outlet, and there's some little fins in there. We got a couple more uh, USBs. These are three. We got two HDMI plugs, another USB that's only a 2.0, two gigabit Ethernet jacks, and a, uh, a power plug. So, uh, unlike uh, a lot of these other sort of mini PCs, this one has uh, the power supply built in, so it doesn't have the, a big brick hanging off the plug. Um, kind of on the fence about it. It's uh, if the power supply dies, and kind of it's, maybe this whole thing goes in the trash. Uh, but it also means I don't have to find a place to put that power brick. So sometimes it can be kind of awkward exactly where they put it, you know, in the uh, in the cord. So opening this thing was actually pretty straightforward. There was these little rubber things covering the holes, which weren't really feet because there's these, you know, parts that stick out like that that it actually sits on. The air intake is the holes in the bottom. But anyway, I pried out the little rubber things, unscrewed it, and um, I have a little rubber tab here to actually pull the lid off. So it came in the box. I'll put it up on screen. came with a little, um, a little card that actually showed, like, hey, you might want to go in there and move this jumper. It has to do with the USB power. So they definitely intend for you to open this thing. And it's pretty easy to get into it. So you got... Um, you know, a couple sodiums for the RAM. This runs DDR5. There's this big heat sink here, and it's kind of a two-part deal um, because you can open up the top half, and there's an empty um, NVMe slot. Um, and then under it is the actual drive that comes pre-installed. So this thing can take a second uh, NVMe drive if you, uh, you know, really want two of them. So it's uh, kind of crazy how small that they make these things now. Like, if someone gave me a bunch of venture capital money, I might start a business making these sort of things. And uh, I'd think to put them in, like, a standard, um, like, five and a quarter inch drive, like, sort of like a, like a CD-ROM drive case. And then you could have, like, a mini, you know, you could put them in, like, a, a standard PC case and have, like, almost like a mini, uh, you know, rack mount system. Um, like, you could have one just full of hard drives to be your file server. You know, one with a... You know, multi-core CPU to be, you know, a CPU server. I mean, you could even put like a, you know, a network switch in there. Um, probably couldn't fit more than 16 ports on the back of something the size of a, of a CD-ROM drive bay. But anyway, I'm not going to tear this thing down any farther. Uh, you can probably find other videos on YouTube where people do do that. Um, instead, I'll boot this thing into Windows and uh, show off generally uh, what it can do, and then uh, go into setting it up as a nine front. CPU server. So I booted it up here. It comes pre-installed with uh, Windows 11. As you can see, it comes with the, uh, the AMD Ryzen 5 6600H uh, processor with the graphics. It comes with the 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, we got our 512 gig NVMe. And right now I have all the USB ports used and I got headphones plugged into the front. It all works. So it comes with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, the two gigabit Ethernet adapters. You can see it sees all, you know, 12 cores of that CPU. Got them all running here. Uh, I got a second monitor plugged in too. So I got OBS running over on that side. And you can see on the little GPU graph here that it spiked up because I have, uh, have OBS um, using the graphics processor to handle uh, the video. And that all seems to be working fine. Ran a few tests with it. So uh, the only other thing I really had that I downloaded to torture it with was uh, I had an Xbox Connect sitting around. So plugged that in. 
and uh, I can play with that. Yep, CPU seems to be fine. RAM is fine. I got a browser running in the background. So, yeah, definitely a capable little system for like about 300 bucks. I got it on Amazon. Uh, not too bad. So, software wise, just seems to come with the usual stuff. The only thing I added was, uh, yeah, the Connect SDK and OBS. And or that just seems to have just the usual Windows stuff. But yeah, I can run this. It's not doing too bad. I mean, I can put my hand on it. I can feel like a little bit of, I can feel warm air coming out of the back, but the top isn't like really hot to the touch, just kind of near the back where the, uh, the fins are. But anyway, I'm going to get this shut down and we'll try, uh, using it as a CPU server on my nine front grid. So this is a very cutting edge system by nine front standards. Um, a lot of the developers work with old ThinkPads. I started off just trying to, uh, you know, boot this thing off a thumb drive, um, you know, with the nine front install ISO, and that just failed. Uh, after messing around the BIOS, I was able to get to Pixie Boot, uh, but the USB ports would die. So that sort of explained why it also failed trying to boot off the thumb drive. Um, this is a problem because I couldn't type anything at the keyboard, so I couldn't enter a user and password manually. Um, on uh, the other CPU, I usually use a thumb drive also to act as the non-volatile RAM to store the user and password token. So that way it could automatically just authenticate with the network after it booted and just join the grid. Uh, but since it wouldn't read a thumb drive at all, I wasn't able to do that. So I had to get creative. So I ended up using a system that I use for working with um, ARM dev boards and Wi-Fi routers. When you build a nine front kernel, uh, part of that process is to take some like basic commands and package them into a little file store called packfs. Uh, and that gets built into the kernel image. Uh, this means that when the kernel boots up, it can then access things like the RC shell, network configuration programs, and USB drivers. Um, do all that before it can access the grid file server or even its own file storage because file storage is ran by user space programs. Um, so you can add anything you want to the PackFS. And what I did was I copied um, the NVRAM from the other CPU server. I already had the you know proper stuff to authenticate with. Just made a copy of that right off the, uh, the partition it sits on, put it in a file. And uh, then I compiled the kernel to, you know, add that in to the uh, little file system built in there. Um, and I didn't run the sort of make install, I just ran make and then renamed it so that it, uh, ls would be AMD64. So I called it PC64N and you can see it's actually slightly bigger. And what I could do then was then set up the whole Pixie boot system. So it's under config, Pixie. That should be this one, yeah. So the Pixie boot system would then feed that specific server, that you know specific kernel. Um, I then told it, hey, here's where your NVRAM is. It'll be in boot, which comes off of PackFS. The various parameters that could load it and then from there it could boot up and so yeah had to go through a little bit of a you know rigmarole to get it working so anyway here it is running i can actually talk to it on the uh the grid um so one of the things that doesn't work is that it uh won't pull in the temperature reading on it. So there's that and the USB are two things that don't work. I mean, the temperature is not that big of a deal, but um, you know, the USB is something I'll probably want to get to at some point. Uh, but both the uh, the ethernet works and um, so does the audio. So I can open up a window here. 
Call it thing one for now. I have thing one and thing two because I wasn't sure which Ethernet port card responded to which MAC address. They're not really labeled on the back. Um, but yeah, the audio works too, so I can go ahead and let's see, bind in the uh, audio device of the CPU server into dev. And then go ahead and run. So yeah, unlike a lot of the other um, machines I have, which, you know, will show some use when running Doom, this thing shows almost nothing. So 12 cores are definitely worth it. Turn that off. So yeah, it uh, took a little bit to get going, but it does indeed work. So my goal is, is to use one of the, um, the outside uh, one of the extra ports on there to uh, have it face outside of my uh, grids network. And that way I can use draw term from my, you know, all the computers in my house that are outside the grid, you know, the external computers. They'll be able to authenticate off the file and auth server. So remember that one has multiple ports too and has an outside facing port. So I could just use that for the auth and then use the CPU server to actually run programs because I do a lot of coding projects that might do, you know, leak memory or crash the system. And I don't want to be doing that sort of thing on the file server. So that means, uh, you know, if the if I do do something um, and mess up the CPU server, I can just reboot it. I'm not using the hard drive on it. I don't have to worry about anything like that. So, but anyway, that is the uh, the B-Link EQ EQR6. Uh, if you want a uh, Windows desktop computer, this thing's certainly capable. Uh, if you want to run nine fronts, well. Either wait some for you know fixes to the USB drivers or learn how to write drivers. Um, anyway, I hope this was informative or entertaining or both. And as always, uh, have fun.